In this video, we're going to take a look at parallax backgrounds. And not only parallax, we're going to look at infinite scrolling. If you're only interested in parallax, I'm going to show how to do that just on its own, first of all. And then we'll look at adding infinite scrolling. It's very pretty and very exciting. So let's take a look. For our background assets, I'm going to be using the Nature Landscapes Free Pixel Art, which is made by Mr. Free Game Assets on itch.io. I'll link that below in the description. I'm going to be using nature set number five. So I'm going to start off with a brand new 2D project. First of all, we're going to want a player character for our camera to follow to test out our background effect. I'm creating one here that I'm going to link in my Patreon for free down below. So if you don't have one yourself, and import it into your project. So you're welcome. Using my previous script to make this easy. I have a lot of free scripts on my Patreon, so check them out. Cool, so now we have a player that moves left and right in our scene. Now we want a camera to be able to follow our player. The easiest way to do this is add Cinemachine. So let's go Window, Package Manager, and in Packages, go to Unity Registry, search for Cinemachine, and click Install. And wait for this to install, and once it's done, you can close this off, right click in our hierarchy, and go Cinemachine 2D Camera. I'm just going to call this CM Cam. And on our Cinemachine, you can see there's a follow slot. All we have to do is drag our player inside this. And now when we move, our camera follows with our player. Cool, now we're all set up. We're going to drag in the four images for our parallax background. You just have to drag this over from the folder into your assets. Then I'm going to click on our first one, hold down shift and click on our last one to select them all. I'm going to set filter node to point no filter, compression to none, and I'm going to set the pixels per unit to be 16. Now individually select each layer of our parallax background and drag it into our hierarchy. You can see some of these layers aren't showing. To fix this, we need to set up our sorting layers. We select on number one. In additional settings on the sprite renderer, you can see we have a sorting layer. If we click add sorting layer, we click the plus. I'm going to call this one sky. Add another one. Call this two cloud. Add another one pre background. And our last one I'll call four foreground. Four foreground. Now select on number one again and in sorting layer, select one sky. Number two, read two cloud. Number three, free background. Number four, four foreground. Now our player is hidden because he's stuck on the default for sorting layer. So let's go back to add sorting layer and add a new one, which I'll call player. I'm going to want my player between my foreground and my background. You can drag and rearrange these layers holding the little toggle on the side. So now if I click back on player, sorting layer, player, we can now see our player again. Right now when we press play, nothing happens with parallel. Not very interesting. So let's write a script to handle our parallax movement of our backgrounds. In our assets, I'm going to right click and go create C sharp script. I'm going to call this background controller. I'm going to double click on this to open up. First of all, let's add our variables. At the top, we're going to want a private float called start pause, which will store the initial position of our background. Next, we'll want a public game object for our camera. And then finally, a public float that we'll call parallax effect which we'll use to determine the speed at which the background should move relative to the camera. Now in start, we're going to set our start pause, which we want to be the initial position of our background image, say transform position dot X, as our background's only going to be moving horizontally. You can set this to Y if your parallax background is moving in a vertical way. Next, we want to calculate the distance our background should move based on the camera's movement. So we're going to say float distance equals cam, dot transform dot position dot x times a parallax effect. So the lower our parallax effect, the faster it will move with our camera. If our parallax effect is set to zero, it'll move with our camera. If it's set to one, it won't move at all. So we could use that like for our sky in the background. So if we set it to something like 0.5, it'll move at half the speed. You get it. So now we need to update the position of our background. So let's go transform dot position equals new vector free and pass in our start position plus our distance. And we also need to pass in a Y and a Z. So we're just going to go transform position dot Y transform position Z since these won't change. Cool. So this is how you get a parallax effect working. If we go back to unity, if we select all our backgrounds and drag on our background controller script, then drag in main camera into your camera slot. Make sure this isn't your Cinemachine camera, but actual main camera. And then go on to each one of your backgrounds and decide the parallax effect you'd like. For our sky, I'm going to make this one so it does not move. For the clouds, I'll do something high, like 0.8, so they move slowly. Our background, a little bit less, 0.6. And our foreground, I'll make move much faster, like 0.3. We can now press play and test these out. So when I move, you can see our images moving at different times. You can see the clouds there are jittering in the background. We can do a fix for that. So if we jump back to our script and instead of using update, we want to use fixed update. This will smooth out our parallax movement. If we go back and test that, now when I move, it's much smoother. Cool, now this looks very nice, but to make this really cool, let's look at infinite scrolling. So for that, what we're going to want to do is for each of our images, we're going to need to copy them and put one either side of our main starting image. First of all, let's do our sky. So I'm going to hold down control D and our first image, we're going to want to the left of our main background image. If we drag this to the side, you can see it's around minus 36. So I'm going to to set our transform x position to be minus 36. I'm going to do control D and take another one. 
And instead of minus 36, it's just going to be 36. So our main background image is wrapped around two duplicate images. If you highlight these two duplicates and drag them onto the original background image that become the child of this main image in the middle. To speed up this process, I'm going to select all of my layers, go Control D and do the same thing. So minus 36 for the first one. You can hold down Control to select just these three, duplicate, and we want just 36. Cool. Now we just parent these to the original backgrounds that they belong to. So one last thing, if you hold down control and select every one of these duplicate children, we don't want them to have this background controller. Only the parent has the background controller on it. So check your parent background still has the controller. None of the children do. Cool. So if we jump back to our script now, we can set up infinite scrolling. As well as wanting the start position, we're also going to want the length of our background image. So in start, we're going to want to go length equals get component sprite renderer dot bounds dot size dot x. Now in fixed update, we're going to want another float, which I'm going to call movement. So for this, we want our cam transform position dot x again. And this time we're going to times it by open brackets one take away our parallax effect. We're going to use this next to calculate our infinite scrolling. So after we set the transform dot position, we're going to say if our movement is greater than our start position plus length, then our start position should plus equal the length. Else if our movement is less than our start position minus our length, our start position will minus equals our length. So if our background has reached the end of its length, we'll adjust the position of our start position so that it's always wedged between infinite scrolling backgrounds. This will make sense when you see it in the scene view. So if we jump back to Unity, now when we press play, if I walk all the way to the edge, it's going to happen first on the foreground because that's the one moving fastest with our camera. You'll see when it hits the very end, it's about to do it. Get ready, get ready. It snaps our background back to the middle. Oh, clouds and background went. Now in your games, you can have a nice parallax effect, which will also infinitely scroll. Of course, you can do one or the other, depending on what kind of thing you want in your game. But cool, as always, you can grab this whole package on my Patreon, as well as any other script I've ever written. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Bye!